Hey guys, welcome, welcome back to Interstage Window, uh, my Saturday stream. That's a conversation with my friends. Um, Landon pretty much is here on almost every episode, and of course he's here today. Say hi, Landon. Hi, Landon. We're playing another <laughs> round, and where in the world is Landon today? Oh my uh, gosh, where are again, you? Your background's different. What? <laughs> once again, not at home. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm on vacation with my family, which tends to be happening often these days. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> lots of fun summer stuff. Lots of fun summer stuff there. I, Welcome. It is oh, go ahead. Sorry. To close. I was going to say it's just quickly drawing to a close, but yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome in Venom. Happy to have you here. Um, I think it has been a second since you've caught a Saturday stream. So happy to see you and uh, you got that first. So that's awesome. <laughs> Oh, all right. So while uh, Landon is taking a break from her vacation to to stream with me, so we really appreciate her and love her for doing that. I don't do that when I'm on vacations. I'm like, mm, whatever, no streaming. Sorry. <laughs> I needed. I need my weekly uh, praise and applause. We discussed this last week. I am secretly Tinkerbell. That's true. That's true. So everybody to make sure, tell Landon how pretty she looks today. Give her all of those like applause, sound alerts, you know, so that she can live another week. Because otherwise we might not have Landon next week on the stream. And next week is our Harry Potter episode for Chamber of Secrets. So it's needed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I uh, welcome. <laughs> oh yeah, we got some, we got some spicy takes for you guys next week. But let's talk about this week first. Um, so welcome Lunar, welcome Mochi and uh, Landon. I'm going to go ahead and switch the stream up so everybody can start seeing the game. And while I'm doing that, what are we going to talk about this week? We are going to talk about how to ruin an RP doing three things. <laughs> no, um, basically <laughs> that it's all the easiest way is to uh, ruin an RP. Uh, and the things that you might be doing that is sabotaging yourself and the success of the RPs that you join and how we can stop them. Uh, and some horror stories from the past where we've all made these mistakes. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a nice little dig into, hey, my RPs keep ending. Why is that sort yeah. of thing? Like it's, you know, we have a lot of people that come in. Uh, to the discord and things like that because of course that's the the help server that we have and, and you just hear this when you're around role players a lot um statements like why does why does everybody ghost me why every time i start to run an rp it fails within six months or you know questions like that and they're like clearly i'm doing something wrong but i can't figure out the first step of it and um, it has a lot to do with certain thought patterns that we see over and over that role players um, mistakenly adopt and uh, and that's what's destroying it. So that's really what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, but first before we get into that, hey Karen, what's your favorite thing of the week? <laughs> All right, so I don't really have a strictly favorite thing this week, but I do have something that I want to talk about. So I did watch the, um, the He-Man remake this week that everyone hates and was really mad at. So I just wanted to come here and tell you that well, yes, it is a bit of a bait and switch. He-Man is not the main character. Teela is the main character. And I know that's like the spark that made a lot of people angry in regards to this um, this remake because it was billed as like a continuation of He-Man for the fans of the original series, which let's keep in mind, the original series was a toy commercial pretending to be a cartoon. Like this is the level that we're at. Okay, but anyway, that is how it was billed. And that's not what it is. Tila's the main character, He-Man's not. It's a total like reimagining as far as the continuation of the story. Um, the tone, although it does lean into a lot of the um, things about the original series that are a little bit more, uh, you know, hammed up and silly, it's, uh, it, it really is a, a different kind of thing. Uh, no, babysitter, I don't want to hang out with you. You can go. Um, <laughs> so, so there's, there's that, but, but I'm here to tell you that it's actually not bad. It's actually good. Okay. So if you go in understanding that the advertising lied to you, then, um, I think you can have a really good time because I enjoyed it. Uh, I don't think I've, I've ever watched something that before where literally everyone was buff. Like literally the only character that was not completely totally muscled is um the little wizard guy orcos 
but that's because you never see his skin. I guarantee if like a leg slipped out of that robe, you'll be like, oh man, Orcos don't slip, skip leg day. Like there's, there's just no way. Cause every single <laughs> character in this is drawn as like, Ur, you know, oh, I'm so strong. Oh my God. Yeah. Like that's every single character, um, which I found amusing. So anyway, why I'll do you the real reason that I liked it. The animation is fabulous. The um, the fight scenes are really, really beautifully done, really entertaining, really awesome. And uh, and the voice acting is stellar. Lena Headley is Evil Lynn, and she just, oh man, she blows it out the water. She does such a good job. I was enthralled from the moment that I heard her. I was like, is that, is that Cersei? Yes, it is Cersei. Oh my gosh. And she does such a good job. Um, not all actors translate into good voice actors, but she did, so. That's my favorite she's thing this week. She's such a good actor. She is. Oh my god, she's so so good. Uh, I love her. She's amazing. Yeah, she's she's definitely a, a huge crush. So I'm glad that she makes an appearance and and little things all over. It's the best. Yeah, yeah. So if you like her, like I would definitely recommend watching this. If for nothing else than her evil Lynn performance, it's amazing. Okay. So that's my favorite thing this week, even though it wasn't like a super favorite thing, like it didn't blow me away, but I just thought the hate that it got was unwarranted. You know, people were like really super hating on it. It wasn't that bad. It was just like the advertising was really bad, not indicative of what it was. <laughs> yeah, I can understand. It's that's happened to the best of us, right? Where we've gone into mm -hmm. the expecting one thing and then it's like, oh, actually, surprise. <laughs> it's not that thing at all. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. But also, don't let that skew you from a good product. Marketing yeah, I mean that's no matter what. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what it what happened here. Like the marketing was just it was just wrong. Like it's not, that's not what it was. What it said it was was just not what it was. <sighs> Landon needs to make a new friend, so I'm gonna have her greet this Star Trek looking man here because she needs a friend to get a promotion, which is what she wants it wants right now. Oh. She wants a promotion, so we're gonna meet Mr. Star Trek here. Okay, well maybe Mr. Star Trek has a trust fund cuz we're still killing Malcolm, right? Oh yeah, he's um he's over here in the corner. Uh he's having his nap while all of his stuff is in the red. So, we'll see what kills him first, hunger, exhaustion, you know, we'll we'll find out. Dehydration. Um, no. I mean, it'll be fun to figure it out. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh man, poor poor kid. Torment keeps going to try to talk to Malcolm. Um, he can't he can't talk to you right now. It's oh. not gonna happen. Here, go play catch with your mom. That'll be fun. <laughs> what happened that he needs to die? Oh, and um, he uh, unfortunately he was he was gonna be a tragic character from the start. We knew this. Um, so, <laughs> I have a channel point. I have a channel point redeem for killing a sim that I'll turn on if we have a sim that's okay to kill that's not gonna totally wreck the legacy. And uh, Katie redeemed it last stream. So we put Malcolm in a box um, to live out the rest of his days miserably. As one should if we are mm -hmm. killing it. Mm -hmm. And the way that this is going to work, so I'm glad that you asked because I wanted to explain this. The way this is going to work is once we have another sim that's okay to kill them off, I'll turn the redeem back on and someone can redeem it. But I think I'm going to have it have the price gradually go up. It was 20k, so I think next time I want to turn it on, it's going to be like 30k. So it's going to get harder and, and harder and harder, and you have to hang out in the streams a bit more if you want to see some Sims die. So if that's oh your jam, make sure you're hanging out a lot. Fair. I guess we'll just have to hang out more. Yep. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I agree. There's no pause. Yes. Uh, All right. So what's what's your favorite thing this week, Landon? So my favorite thing is not necessarily media or fandom based or anything like that, but it is this beautiful thing on the top of my lip. Uh, I got my piercing back and it's school approved. So that's the best. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so glad. I So the, the school is literally, they're going to let you keep it. They're fine with it. Uh, it, it is not against dress code. Uh, and I saw someone else have one. So okay. that is I'm taking a school approved. We'll see. My principal might be a little strict, but I'm just going to go with it. And also he's only seen me in a mask basically for the entire year. So part of me is kind of like, I've had so a in his mind, <laughs> so in his mind, he might be like, wait, did she have that before? 
Yeah. <laughs> hey. Hey, welcome, Hoyley. Uh, happy to have a new face in the stream here. Well, you know, That's I think it looks. Stalker. Oh, <laughs> welcome, Landed Stalker. What's up? <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I'm very excited. It fits the queer aesthetic. For so sure. So that's, that's what we uh, aimed to do. For sure, for yeah. sure. I mean, I think I think it looks perfect, right? Like, it's so, been, it totally suits you. Thank you. I have been bugging, I think, like, you and talking to you about it that I've wanted it for the better part of a year now. So Yeah. Finally, did the thing. Yeah, you've been mentioning it. <laughs> You've been mentioning it randomly for a long time now, I feel like. So yeah, probably like a year or more. Yeah, because I had it and then I took it out for the interview to mm -hmm. subtly enough get the job that I had for last year. And then <laughs> I was like, okay. It worked. <laughs> I mean, it worked. So, you know, when you're interviewing, you don't want to take risks like that. So yeah. Exactly. So, <laughs> nope, just very excited. And I'm also, also like school is starting again. So mm. I'm really like, we're starting to get into that mode. And as much as I have enjoyed summer and having time off and been very, very busy. So not much of a relaxing summer. Um, I'm looking forward to school starting. Yeah. So, uh, and, and things to come in September. So I'm, I'm just very excited about it. It'll be nice to have a routine and stuff again, right? That's like mm -hmm. specific and week to week and all that good stuff. Is the Katie. Hi, Katie. <gasps> Welcome, Katie. Malcolm's not dead yet, so don't worry. You haven't missed the important things. <laughs> Killing off my husband. Yeah, he's doing not so good. Here's where his bars all are, so you can get an idea. <laughs> Beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right, shall we get into this? Yes. Okay, so how do we want to get started with our topic today? Okay, so since we're talking about killing an RP, uh, I guess we can talk about, like, how killing an RP works because don't don't RPs just end when they're supposed to end? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the only people that don't role play would say such a thing. Everyone knows all the way from tabletop games to uh, to online, uh, you know, guilds in a in a MMO. Uh, role plays end um, typically either with a sputter or with an explosive argument. Um, you know, everybody either gets busy or they decide they hate each other. They don't just end, right? <laughs> those, those are the only two options. I think that's how only, that's how everything ends, right? It's either with a bit boom sure. or a stutter. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There, nothing just ends on its own. <laughs> um, but like, I, I agree, like on this, on this channel, we've talked a lot about ending RPs when they're supposed to and what it feels right and letting it go and being honest with yourself that it's time to create a new story. Um, and that is all true, except that there are things that you do that you may not realize that you're doing that speeds that process along faster. Yeah, um, that makes things so end before it's really time. Yeah. And, and what that could look like is that you get very, 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 very excited. You build an RP. It's great. It's awesome. You have the first few weeks to month or two, like a first couple of weeks to two months where everyone's posting all the time. Things are great. Yada, yada, yada. And then it just dies. Mm -hmm. And then nothing like feel like it doesn't ever pick back up again. People get busy, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so how does that happen? Why is that that cycle something that we've all fallen into at some point in time in our RP career? Yeah. And like this can happen with one on ones, too. You probably had it happen with partners. You probably had it happen with groups. Um, and this is something that that happens naturally. So like it's it, it happens sometimes regardless of these habits, but we're talking about these habits because there are definitely role players that are like, why does this always happen to me? The RP is barely started and why is it already happening? You know, why can't I have an RP that lasts a year? So that's what we're endeavoring to answer today is, you know, for, for people that it, that it seems like to you that all of your RPs always end super fast, you might be making that happen. And if you are, these are some of the ways that we have seen people kind of um, create their own misery. Yep. Um, and so I think I think the first thing that we really need to talk about, because we've always talked about that RPs are admin down, right? Um, and that's the admin that create the sort of environment mm -hmm. that uh, 
that these RPs end. Um, so really what that looks like is that uh, the admins fall into traps that they they get into the circle that they create a new RP and then suddenly something happens and then the RP dies and then that continues to cycle. So the, this comes from and is mostly fueled by the fact that admin fall into these cycles. It's not just mm -hmm. players. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for sure. Like if you're the person running the role play, then um, then that's most likely what's going on here. Oh my gosh, Star Trek man, move out of the way. Okay. <laughs> But we're trying to put the baby in the bed <laughs> <laughs> also i do i just realized this i love that we're talking about how to kill an rp on the episode that we're killing Ma malcolm <laughs> yeah we planned that we made sure that happened that way we did it it's just kind of we just took advantage <laughs> <I'm a plan. laughs> okay get out um, of my house sir but it's um, not but oh yeah sorry go ahead you're good. I was going to say, it's not just admin that create this environment. They certainly do are the ones that create it, that the ones that allow it, that don't stop it. If it's not them who's in, who's like responsible for the things that are killing the RP. Um, but new players coming in are a real big uh, person to be creating sort of an environment because new players automatically mean things get shaken up, more things can be added. Uh, and if new players are coming in and they have those patterns, people tend to follow that new energy, mm -hmm. uh, especially if that new player is sticking around. A lot of the times uh, new players, if, if they're not, the things that we're gonna talk about that really truly murder an RP uh, are things that if you don't vibe with it, you're not gonna, ch like if you, if you encourage it, then you're not going to hang out in an RP that is af not affected by these things. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yep. So we're not talking about like habits of somebody that joins an RP and is there for like a week and then bails. Like that's not what we're talking yeah. about. We're talking about no. people that are there long term. We're talking about the people that are running the role play. Um, we're talking about, you know, people that are regularly searching for, for partners in a one on one sense, like that sort of thing. Not not people that are here and gone. Yep. Uh, yeah. and, then the other, and then another thing is that in overall uncaring and boredom, and we'll talk about the passiveness that comes with that, mm -hmm. but just overall boredom with, with an RP uh, is going to not just kill the RP, but it is going to spread like wildfire. Mm -hmm. If there is one person in the RP who is bored of the RP, I guarantee you by the next week, there will be two people and then there will be four people and then there will be everybody. <laughs> it can grow really quickly like that. And it can even, it can be surprising um how fast that that can multiply yeah uh and how like unaware especially if it's part of your habit and your habitual parts of of doing rp and and being involved in this group how unaware people are that they're bored of the rp yeah sometimes uh, people are bored and they don't even want to admit it to themselves which is really sad but that does happen or or admit it to other people. It's really difficult to admit it to other people, especially yeah. if this is like your friendship and you're like, oh, I really don't want this RP to die and I'm scared that it's going to die. It's like, oh God, it's it's time. It like, like that boredom is going to kill everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So those things happen. Um, and a, But a lot of these things that we're talking about are predicated on like certain thought patterns that we can get into as role players that are maybe beneficial in some contexts of life, but they actually are harmful when it comes to role play as a hobby. Um, so I think that's the meat of what we want to talk about, right? Is that everything we wanted to say about where this comes from? Nope, I think that that's, those are the places. Yep, okay, awesome. So yeah, so there's there's kind of like, there's some, I guess you role play deadly sins is what Landon wrote in our notes. And I, I kind of agree with that and I love that. Um, this idea that there's like deadly sins of role play, because I think there definitely are. So we're going to talk about the three deadly sins of role play. Um, Katie says, I've always felt bad about asking to end something, even when it's a great time and place to end it. Yeah, well, I think that that's, that's, uh, that's passiveness. And we're going to talk about that as one of the deadly sins. But I think the first deadly sin we want to talk about is, um, is uniqueness. So, okay. um, <laughs> <laughs> the one that kills me <laughs> uh-huh it totally it totally does so i just want to set the stage here this is something that i've talked about on spare room before so i do have a spare room episode about how uniqueness is killing your creativity if you want to you know watch that 
Um, but this is something that I think real is really, really a trap for younger role players, right? Because the way that our culture is set up, we're taught, you know, don't cheat, don't copy from other people, don't trace when you draw, things like that. And this idea just permeates into every area. And so that we start to believe that copying, like just by itself, like the idea of copying is bad. And we we get this, we get this in our heads where we want to create something that's like never been done before. So I'm here to tell you that is impossible. You cannot create something that's never been done before. It's all been done. And this idea that there are creatives out there that are creating things whole cloth from scratch that are totally unique and never been done before, that's false. The only reason why you might think that is because you have not done enough reading, watched enough movies, whatever, you know, your your medium is that you're, you know, focused on. You've just not consumed enough of it. Everybody is inspired from everyone and copies everyone. There is no, like, there is no world where people are just creating things purely from their own minds with no inspiration from anything else. It doesn't happen. It's not a thing. So there is a, there have been over the course of the earth, 107 billion people who have been alive over the course of earth's history, right? That's what people like. Estimate. Yeah. Yeah. Like in, in total. Are you, are you telling me that no one, like you truly believe you can create someone, something that no one has ever had the same thought or idea of that? It's not, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's not, nothing is unique. Even, and even outside of the art world, nothing is unique. No person is like truly deeply unique. Now you might be unique in the sense of your experiences, current predicament, all of those things. But the reality is, is that some, something is similar enough that it is no longer unique. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. For uh, sure. it, it's just, it's like this idea of being like, oh, we, I, I have to create everything completely on my own in order for it to be worthy is so silly. Yeah, and it is. Back. So much. It, it totally is. And Grace, I see what you're saying um, with your comments, uh, issues about mir mirroring what other people do in, even in video games. So here's the example. I think this is a great example. Like I felt bad when I looked at someone's Animal Crossing Island aesthetic and um, and got over it after a few weeks. And even like now in Sims, I feel bad about mirroring what content creators do in their games. Like, and, and I think these are feelings that a lot of us have. And we get taught that thinking this and, and that, that behaving this way and feeling bad about copying is the right thing to do. So I'm here to help you take the first step in freeing your mind. It is not bad to copy. Okay, it's I... not. There, this, is, this is what's actually bad. So I'll tell you what's actually bad. What's actually bad is a situation I saw come across my Twitter timeline recently where this author had taken like um, Destiel and Stucky and a few other really popular male male ships and um, they had taken works off of AO3, literally copied them and changed the names and a few certain things and then published those fix as books on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is bad. Do not take something that someone put out there for free and literally word for word copy it so that you can make money. Like, don't do that, okay? That is actually bad. But what's not bad- That's actual plagiarism. Like, yeah, that's like really- Copying and plagiarism. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because now what you've, what you've done is you've taken what someone's work is and you have profited from it. And not only that, you've made it harder for if that person ever wanted to like, you know, give their fic a Fifty Shades of Grey treatment and publish it on their own. Now they, they can't really, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a sticky situation now for them, right? So, I mean, that is bad. <laughs> But um, but what's not bad is like I'm running a role play group and I'm, in I'm inexperienced at it and I don't really know exactly what I want. But um, Karen runs runs great role play groups and I, I loved playing in hers. So I'm going to take her rule set and copy it and then just change a few things to suit my needs. That's not bad. OK, your rule set is not where your creativity goes into. Um, you know, every role plays rules look similar. Like that's not a problem. Okay. <laughs> um, and the more that you do like copy and practice and things like that, the easier it's going to be for you to take something that you're inspired from and put your own spin on it so that it feels really uniquely you. And then people are going to be drawn to it, but you only learn how to do that by 
First, creating things that are kinda copying, like writing fanfic, or tracing art, or, you know, uh, you get the idea, right? Like, kind of sort of copying. That's how you learn when you're younger and you just don't have a lot of experience as a creative yet. And so long as you're not trying to sell that stuff, it's not a problem. And not even as like a, as a, like, as like a younger person too, there are so much things within fandom that are copying that then become fanon. Yeah. Like, uh, especially this is especially prevalent in the Harry Potter community, mm -hmm. where there are certain store names or certain concepts or certain things that it's like, oh, I really like that idea or I really like the name of that bar. And so now it's going to be Fanon. And it's so popularized and so everywhere within Fanon that everyone thinks that it's actually canon. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, here's a wonderful, like, copying. wonderful example, Black Hermione. Like that, yeah. is a, that was a fanon concept created from, oh, thank you so much for following Layla Sims. Happy to have you here. That was originally a fanon concept that somebody was like, you know, um, Hermione already has like a lot of issues with her hair. Um, and that's really relatable if you have like really curly hair. So, um, you know, I think it would be cool to have a black version of Hermione. And that got so popular that it circled back around to where that is canon in Cursed Child. And so there is a, a real quote unquote canon. We, we can debate whether that's Cursed Child's really canon or not, but there's a canonish version of Hermione <laughs> that is black, right? So like, and, and that's not, and that's like a, a, the quintessential example, right? Because it circled back around and kind of sort of became canon. But, um, but there's all kinds of things like that, that if you've been in the Harry Potter fandom for a while, you might forget if it's actually even in the books or not, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and it also goes beyond that. It goes to things like um, derivative copies of like the idea of vampires. Vampires mm -hmm. originated off of, uh, especially modern day vampires originated off European myths of vampires. Yeah. Like a vampire and folklore vampires, is totally different than vampires today. Absolutely. But we can thank Anne Rice for that. Anne Rice mm -hmm. created the literary version of the modern day vampire that then people took what they liked and what they didn't. And guess what? Eventually we ended up with Twilight. Now there are creative things about Stephanie Weyer's version of the Twilight vampires. However, it is not unique there are unique aspects, but it's still vampires. So are you saying that that's like copying? And like, it's this idea that in art, you have to be completely and utterly different and unique. And the reality is that's never going to happen. Yeah. Give up now. <laughs> Give up now because your, your need to be unique and different. And you're like, it's like we're conflating creative and unique. Those are yeah. two different things, but we're conflating them. We're like, oh, your creative ideas uh, of how to interpret this thing is uniqueness. And that's not true. It's just creativity. And there are certain areas of the role play community where this runs rampant. So I'd like to give an example also of where um, I've seen people like take things too far and like a, a specific example of where uniqueness really got people. So on Tumblr, a large part of the roleplay community was not just writing, but also creating graphics and aesthetics and things like that, right? And people would decide that like certain fonts or like filters were like theirs, you know? So they would do things like take a screenshot of... Um, of the character right to go make an aesthetic of it and they would think that they owned that screenshot and that no one else could use it or they were copying them and it was just like it was so overblown and ridiculous and like it just created all kinds of arguments and people would literally get like constant mean anonymous messages because they were being accused of copying a fan work and it's like that is not what happened. They happened to be inspired by the same thing, or maybe they did copy. Either way, who cares? You're not the one that filmed that television episode you took the screenshot from. What's the big deal, right? <laughs> well, yeah, and I have I have another example that actually happened this last couple weeks um, on t on D and D TikTok. Hi, D and D TikTok. We're crossing over a little bit. <laughs> um, there is a creator. 
or there's a show called Critical Role where they live action, live play uh, D and D games. And there's a yeah. If you've not seen there. if you've not seen them before, Critical Role is like the most popular one. Great place to start watching that kind of content. Yeah. D22. But anyway, uh, there is a character on this season's uh, Critical Role uh, that's I think named Emerald or something. It has an emerald necklace, right? A creator on D and D TikTok got angry. Uh, and said that Critical Role stole her idea because she has an original character named Opal who has an Opal necklace. Kill me. Uh, and she had been streaming for the better part of a year with this this half elf, half human Opal character with Opal necklace. Uh, and it's like, that is so, like, two things. First of all, not copying because unoriginal idea right there like you can that's happened way before in several different literary aspects uh-huh. but also magical idea, magical she, jewelry is like not a new idea <laughs> then she sued she threatened to sue critical role uh for Mm-mm. for basically plagiarizing which by the way you can't plagiarize live action improv anyway um she basically threatened to sue critical role unless they let her on the show oh my god (laughs) you know she's making it up come on well and she's not right there's this she's had a year worth of streams but the fact that she like is so possessive over no no i don't i mean i mean making up that she has any intention to sue them oh yeah no it's a hundred percent um she but it's the fact that she has such like possessiveness over her character and her idea that she thinks it's so unique um that in the reality it's it's not yeah <laughs> it, it's not yours and other people are capable of having the same ideas as you and that thoughts are thoughts they you can't possess them you can't yeah. own them you can't own things like that especially if they're inspired off of fandom things kind of like mm-hmm. the, the the graphics you were talking about yeah Um, this is not just an rp problem this is a media problem in general and fandom problem um or even an art an artist problem but it is like this idea of if you are going to be creative you need to let go of the fact that other people might take inspiration off of you other people might have the same ideas as you and that trying to be perfectly unique is not going to get you anywhere yeah What's up? What's up, Lee? Is Sorry, my cat wants to come test it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so so let's talk about like why this is actually bad. So people that get this idea in their head and, and start to think, well, gosh, I never want to be accused of copying. Copying's bad. And they start to get into it. What ends up actually happening to them is that they don't make anything. They don't make anything. They, because they're so worried about copying that they're like, well, gosh, I can't do that because so-and-so did that. I can't do that because so-and-so did that. And I can't do that because so-and-so did this kind of similar thing. And like, it's really, really stifling. So instead of worrying about copying, um, it's just much better to just like deal with it. And when you create on the internet, eventually someone is going to accuse you of copying. It is inevitable. It is impossible to avoid. The only way to avoid it is to not make stuff on the internet um so and role playing is one of those things so uh (laughs) also not consume any media too right then you might think that hey you're (laughs) sorry thank you thank you katie uh (laughs) no i see what's going on in the chat yeah it's because we're poor right now um q i'm so sorry (laughs) welcome welcome to another we need a different we need a different husband in order to afford win we're at the beginning of a, of a legacy challenge, so that's why things are a little bit weird. Um, but yeah, no, I think that uh, you you can't then also consume media because then, God forbid, you get inspired off of that media. And then oh my God. Like, this thing unique. <laughs> the worst, right? <laughs> yes, so it's just like, it's just one of those things that, that, and it's hard once you get in that thought pattern to stop it, But it's one of those things that if you can just like slowly like let yourself stop doing this, then you're going to have a much better experience 
when it comes to all of all of your creativity. So my recommendation with uniqueness is really just like, if you've gotten yourself into that mindset, just like when you catch yourself thinking like, well, gosh, this isn't unique. So-and-so already did this. Tell yourself, oh, but who cares? But who cares? But who cares? Like, just keep telling yourself that until you get out of that mindset that's like, oh, I have to be so unique. I can't do this because someone else did it. You can actually, it's fine. <laughs> I think that with RP, there is a difficult balance that some people aren't good at reading. Um, and I think that also is, there's a difference between admin uniqueness and player uniqueness. So yeah. with player uniqueness, um, that balance is important that you're not then copying directly someone else's plot. But that really right? only applies to like, groups and you're trying to keep a good yes. social dynamic within the group if Absolutely. we're talking about one-on-ones it's not the case because you're not all playing together but that but yes. that's not that's not about copying being bad that's more about like making sure everyone in the group gets a chance to feel special yes well and i and i think like can i give a perfect example of yeah yeah experience this uh there was a time where there were two care there were two players who were going to write a uh a a serial killer skinny cra cracked out guy looking at trying to kill a redheaded girl and then the next week somebody did the same exact thing and same mm -hmm. exact dynamic that copying even if you like the plot copying to that extent where nothing is unique makes it really hard within the group dynamic to to work yeah if you had changed even a little bit or if things had changed even just the slightest then things might have worked out a little bit better mm -hmm. or there might have been a lot a lot of a little bit more work or there wouldn't have felt as awkward because yeah you can still have that dynamic it just needs to be slightly different yeah um but it doesn't have to be completely unique and it's where that difficult balance lies uh within group dynamics yeah again yeah. if you're building an rp if you are an admin trying to create your own completely unique world it's not going to happen. You're going to tie it really hard <laughs> before you even have characters. And then not, not even that you are then going to open up your, your group hypothetically to the public where you are welcoming people in who are guaranteed not going to care as much as you about uniqueness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that uniqueness is going to be ruined anyway, because you're going to have people who might come in with, you know, DCL or, uh, and another pre established, you know, couple uh, are, that they wanted to RP or something like that, that isn't unique. Yep, for sure. And that happens all the time. So it's kind of oh, like, yeah. that's what we're kind of calling these, like the deadly sins of role play. It's not that they are bad in and of themselves. It's that when you take them to the extreme, then everything starts falling apart, right? So a little bit of uniqueness is good. Attempt to make your own thing and put your own spin on things is good. That's going to push you as a creative. That's going to make things more fun. That's going to make people drawn to you because they feel like you're adding a particular piece of value that they find interesting, right? Like these are good things. But when yeah. you get so obsessed with being unique that um, that that you, you're like looking for where you might be copying everywhere, you're not going to be able to create anything. I think that there's an, there's an important thing that like the extent of art and the want to create art comes from, in my opinion, consuming something and not being as satisfied as you could be with that con consuming thing. Mm -hmm. Or that like, and that's where inspiration comes. That's where creativity comes in. That's when you're like, oh, what if I change this thing? Or if I give this thing? Or if I give Draco ha Malfoy a redemption arc he deserved? Like all of these. <laughs> <laughs> Just had a throw it in there as a specific. <laughs> um, all these, like little little things that you're like you consume something and then you want to change it. Uh, mm -hmm. I really like this art piece. I really enjoy the colors. I want to play with those colors, but in a different way. Like that's mm -hmm. what I think the creation process really is. And I think that if you are so focused on uniqueness, you forget that you are consuming to create. Yeah. Well, because that that's where yeah. good art good art ultimately comes from having good taste, right? Like ultimately, if you're if you're a good creative, it starts from having good taste, from being able to point at something and go, I like this because whatever, or I dislike this because whatever, right? And that's where it really comes from, which is why drawing inspiration and doing some copying is a good thing. Yeah, the thing that doesn't make you a better writer is constantly practicing writing. What makes mm -hmm. you a better writing a writer is actually reading different works of, mm -hmm. of fiction. 
I mean, both. You have to practice. You have to practice too. But if you try to just write with no reading, it's not going to work out for you. (laughs) No, it's what can further you along is is the reading because that gives you access to more information, more things to draw from. Yeah. Like it's it's like sitting there and trying to draw with three colors instead of drawing with the whole rainbow. Like you're going to create more if you have more stuff to pull from. Yeah. And more tools. The same thing can be said with RP steal somebody's rules it doesn't matter so yeah. if you really liked the concept of one person's rp but you didn't like this thing about it or you didn't like the setting or you didn't like any of this thing or you just didn't like the rp people in general to be completely honest there's nothing wrong with creating a very similar rp mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with it inherently you are not bad for doing it <laughs> yep but if you're like gosh i want a harry potter rp but i hate the harry potter house system Okay, so make one that doesn't have a house system. Like, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Um, I, I understand. And then if, if you're on the other side of that, where someone has taken what you deem and possess as your idea and has transformed it into something slightly different, stop being hung up about it. Let it happen. At the end, as long as they're not making money or profiting off of something and they haven't stolen your words word for word, as far as like that profit and making money off of it, mm-hmm. let it live. It's mm-hmm. not, you've put it out into the universe. You've published it on the internet. You need to know that it's no longer yours to have. Yeah. Yep. For sure. And I just think in, in, in role play in particular, like this is what people get hung up on as far as like being unique goes, they'll get hung up and say things like, but they, but they took it from me. And it's like, okay, well, what's the bad thing that's going to happen to you now? Like, so I mean, uh, it's like, but they, but they copied me. So that doesn't stop you from being able to role play. It doesn't have anything to do with your role play. So it's just like, what? Who cares? Yeah. And there's also a certain level of like, well, what if they get more popular? What if they, what if more people write or, or write with their RP or something like that? Well, then maybe their idea was better suited for whoever they're advertising for than yours Mm -hmm. was. That doesn't mm-hmm. equate, like, popularity doesn't equate goodness or how well the RP is or anything like that. It just means that this is, that's just might be more popular amongst the people that they're advertising to. Yep. Uh, and that has nothing to do with you, and you shouldn't internalize it because that will also just kill it. That will kill yeah. the RP. <laughs> it really really will it will it'll kill it so fast and here's and here's the other thing like can i be like really really real for a second oh, yeah. when you do see role plays that are like straight up like seriously word for word copies of another role play every single time what happened is either the mods in the first role play really like were not good and upset people and so people left and made their own because they didn't want to deal with those mods anymore or the situation is the first role play died and it doesn't it's not active and so everybody took their toys to an active role play like when people copy word for word that those are the situations that i typically see and it's like well that makes perfect sense you know something was wrong with your sandbox and you wanted to take your toys to another sandbox like that's fine there's nothing wrong with that you know you didn't get along with the mods you didn't get along with the mods that is what it is right you can't make you can't change that other than by making another role play I think that this leads into our second deadly sin if you are if you are amicable to go down that road. Yeah, yeah, let's you, next one. Let's go. So I think that what that leads to is that like that inherently like there's two sandboxes and those two sandboxes are competing and that's the second deadly sin is competition. Mm-hmm. The minute you start taking this free uh, this free fun creative supposed to take you out of the real life escapism hobby and start making it a competition that someone could win in is the second your rp dies yeah yep. even if you are a player character even if you are a player in and you're not running an admin and that's how you enter other rps you will kill that rp or no or you will kill our, your rp experience within that rp Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Every yep. time. It's a cl- this is a collaborative hobby. Um, unfortunately, however, in our modern Western society, we have fetishized competition to the point that we believe that like you should always be trying to be 
do do the best like existing is not good enough you have to do your your maximum all the time better than everybody else like we do that's that's how our culture is and like i'm not against competition in general like okay i'll give an, a non-rp example sports right i definitely watch football from time to time if you follow pro football you probably remember a couple of years ago um, and I don't think pro, I don't think football is like a bad thing. Okay, I know there's controversy over it because of the physical damage, but I grew up on it. Sorry, it, I'm problematic. I guess whatever. Um, but, but I don't think organized physical sports are necessarily a bad thing. Anyways, um, however, you are problematic, but not for that. It's fine. well, you know. Anyways, <laughs> so, well, if you do follow pro football, then you probably remember a few years ago when um, the Saints had this bounty program. And what the bounty program was is they would pay their players if they injured a certain players on the opposing teams and like took them out so they couldn't play anymore because if you if you follow football you know certain injuries like they can't play for a certain amount of games right because they're healing up so they maybe don't get to play for like a month or something if they get injured really bad and if that happens to a star player it can totally destroy a team so <laughs> so it's just like it, it's crazy. It's crazy. But that is what I mean. Like there's competition as in, hey, we're playing a competitive sport. Let's do our best to win. And then there's competition that's like, guess what we could do to win? We could like actually try to kill the other players. Um, and let's incentivize our players to do that. Like, so that's what I mean. Like competition isn't necessarily a bad thing. I do think it's good if you're invested in a hobby like role play to be the best role player you can be and sometimes that does mean looking at others that are doing it badly and making sure you don't do that right but um but that doesn't mean that you should be trying to steamroll everyone else because then who is going to write with you if you have steamrolled all the others yeah i mean i i experience this as a very competitive person um i am naturally competitive and that is something, like, this is my deadly sin, right? Um, <laughs> but I think that there's also this need, to, like, there is no best, right? This hobby is full of people who are looking for a vast different amount of things. Mm -hmm. And so constantly trying to, like, be better than everyone else automatically makes you not a good person to write with. <laughs> no, because, because it's all about collaboration. It, That's the point of the hobby. Yeah. Um, and and also because you can't be better than any everybody else. Like you, you just you can't. As much as you might try or want to be or hope to be or or become a rules lawyer to be, like you can't be better than everybody. Um, because it's also not how art works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah it's like not how writing works uh and and the way that like this is then is shown comes in a multiple different ways so you have people who like feel like they can win rp by being the person who wins every fight whose character is the best at everything because they know as a writer they can't be the best of everything but their character could be yeah. Uh, so this main also, character syndrome is what we like to call main that. Character syndrome. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have the the people that like I kind of name dropped it earlier who are more rules lawyery as far as being the best, who follow everything to an exact T and then call out any sort of injustice that they see or anything that is against the rules because that makes them a better RPer. Um, and then there's also the form of RPing that better than is if you're RPing with the most people. Mm -hmm. uh, that most people want to write with you. You are a better RPer. And that's also not true <laughs> because you can, if all like, if for some people, like for me, I don't want to necessarily RP with people who are very surface level, who are RPing with a ton of other people um, because I want our interactions to be special. That's just how I RP. Uh, so those tend to be the three different ways that I have seen competition come out within like especially group style rp uh and all of those are just as deadly as the last 
ignore. Yep, for sure. Yeah, Katie, we have definitely talked about stuff like this before. Um, a previous episode, we were probably talking about playing villains. Because when you play a villain, you have to take L's sometimes. I bet it's in that episode. Um, but, uh, but when characters never want to take an L and how hard that can be. And yeah, you don't always think about it because in your mind, you're thinking about your character. You're not thinking about how that affects everybody else. Um, but it's very, very true. It's very, you gotta, you, you have to let your character lose sometimes or it's just not going to work out for you. You know, it's just not. Yeah. Before I make a decision to interact with like specifically this example, I had a character, Rabastian, Rabastian. Rebastian, I can say it. It's fine. I know how to spell it. <laughs> um, <laughs> who who ran for mayor in in this one election electoral uh, or was it was it mayor? I don't know. We'll go with yeah, it. Yeah, no, it was mayor. You're uh, right. <laughs> and and before I made the decision to whether or not this would be something the character did, I had to think about what would happen if this character wins. And what would happen if this character loses? Mm -hmm. And I think that every single decision you make when it comes to large scope decisions like that, you need to think about both of those objects because it has to be on the table. Even if even if the mods are gonna twist it, even if it's like obvious one way or the other, even if like it is a plot point um, that this character does win, uh, it needs to it needs to be thought about at the very least. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because sometimes growth and character development and plots come most from when a character loses rather than wins. Yeah. And there's so a you reason, have to think about that. There's a reason why in every single hero's journey story, the hero loses at some point. There's mm -hmm. a reason why they have to overcome the thought. Like, thinking specifically of Marvel, there's a reason why the ending of, uh, not, what's the one before Endgame? Oh, um, the, uh, the, the first one, it's like the two part one is what you're talking yes. about, right? The first part um, of that one. Yeah. There's a reason why Thanos snaps his fingers and it's because there needed to be this loss. Uh, there's a reason why even in the original Avengers, uh, they lose at Loki and, and, uh, Phil dies and all of this thing. Mm -hmm. It's because there's this idea of overcoming this loss infinity war thank you Katie. yeah there we go um <laughs> it's just it's a better story and you have to kind of be willing to lose uh mm -hmm. as as a player in general i feel yeah yeah i think when you're not willing to lose when you're when you're prioritizing when when what you believe is going to be most fun is if you and your character get exactly what you want all the time that's when this is turned into too much right it's 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 about making sure that you get to win sometimes and the other person gets to win sometimes. And that's where that's where we, we want to strike that balance. So if you're yeah. too focused on competition, then you're not gonna realize that, hey, you've won the last like three times. It's time for somebody else to win. Like that's not gonna occur to you because you're focused on competing. So that's what the advice really is here is try not to like focus so hard on competing. You should be focusing on making sure that everybody gets to have fun. Yep. And uh, I also think that, um, oh, I had a thought. It left. God. Oh, damn. sorry. So good. <laughs> no, it's not your fault. Um, <laughs> just, you know, Saturday brain. It's fine. Yeah. I didn't have my two cups of coffee this morning. Uh, that, oh, no. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think that I, um, an important part in all of this too is recognizing that you oh that if you're tying yourself so closely to your character that your character always has to win in order for you to feel successful in the rp that is also something that i would encourage people to think about because um while there are self inserts and people who rp self inserts all the time and it is completely an acceptable way if your intention is not to make a self insert but you are that attached to your character you might have made a self-insert. Well, they don't even have to be a self-insert, but what is going to end up happening is even if they're not, you've now duplicated all of the reasons everyone hates self-inserts. Yes. So, like, who cares if they're not a self-insert? You're doing the same things that everyone hates about them. Yeah. If you're, yeah, especially if you're so closely tied. It's, it's not, yeah. it's 
no no bueno do not do the thing <laughs> oops torment sleeping on the floor i let him get too tired oh torment <laughs> <Poor Oops. babe. laughs> that's okay do we, have, we'll fix do it. we have two children or three children i can't no, we have two we have torment and lily okay Yep. But I think this manifests in another way, too. So so one other thing that we've not talked about, we've talked about it mostly from a character perspective of trying to win. But I have also seen this in, like, trying to be the most well-liked role player. Um, so I'll tell you the ways that I have seen that manifest that's actually dangerous. Because, of course, you want to be liked. And you should try to be liked by lots of people. That's not bad. But this mostly happens on like social media sites that people are using for role play. So like if they're trying to role play on Twitter, if they're trying to role play on Tumblr, um, things like that, right? So if you are role playing in those spaces, what can easily happen in social media, because you have like likes and follows and things like that, is that people get more obsessed with the idea of like getting the most followers as opposed to having the best role play experience. So what ends up happening is that people will be like, okay, like we've seen, if you've role played on social media, you've seen this, there'll be role play accounts and everyone will be like kissing their ass and telling them what an awesome role player they are. And then you'll go and you'll look at their Twitter or look at their blog or whatever. And it'll be like, where's the role play? I don't see it <laughs> because they just got popular by posting like really, you know, rebloggable tweets and things of that nature. They, they didn't get popular by, um, actually, you know, role playing. <laughs> so you get in this really strange situation where their goal has nothing to do with actually role playing. And then they get the super popular blog and people see that they're popular and they're like, well, gosh, I want lots of role play. So I'm going to, you know, praise them so that they'll retweet me and maybe I'll find partners. Right. So it's just this it's just this weird cycle where our brains get like so focused on numbers and like growing those numbers that uh, that's what we're more worried about. I'll give another example of where I've seen this happen too. admins that are running role plays that get more concerned about having the largest player base than actually having a fun role play. And that causes all kinds of problems too, but it comes from the same place. It's the same place as like, oh, I want to have um, my number good. I want the number to get higher. That's what would make me happy is if the number got higher, right? So those are ways, those are, those are competitive modes in our brains as well. Yeah, the number can get higher on the admin that I have, the amount of threads I have within a 1RP could be higher. Like all of all of those things um, are part of that. I, I mm -hmm. part of that problem, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Yep, for sure. Yep, so competition isn't necessarily bad. You should be trying to get better at your hobby. You should be trying to do your best, but when it's at the expense of everyone else, then it's a big problem. Yeah, and I think uh, I also have a tough time with thinking that competition belongs in RP, uh, especially if it's you as the player competing. Yeah. Um, because it's not. It's a collaboration, right? I feel like it's the exact opposite of of uh, of competition. Collaboration is working together to create a story, whereas competition is trying to create the best story mm -hmm. um and and that the the anything of competition existing within it for me just doesn't work um and can create a lot of like alienation of members or can create you know possessiveness that once again that possessiveness of ideas um or possessiveness of thoughts and stories and all of this that i don't particularly like within my rp experience I am yep. not saying I am the best of it at it. Like I said, I'm a very competitive person. And so at times I'll sit there and I'll be like, oh, oh, you're just, you're being, you're being terrible just because you think it's a competition. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, I mean, so you, but you know, like it's very hard once you get in that mindset to get out of it. Right. And, yeah. and being competitive oh, yeah. is truly beneficial in lots of areas of our lives because we live in a winner takes all capitalist economy. So that's that's just the reality, okay? And that means that competing in things like your workplace, in school, 
those are very beneficial, which we spend a lot of time doing those things. So then your mind gets into that kind of state, and then you want to compete in areas that make no sense, like a collaborative hobby, or your friendships, or, you know, things like that, that, that in role play matter way more than winning. Yes. Um, and I think this is a, yeah, this is just a problem that has existed all over. Um, and taking a step back, realizing that you're, no one is also judging your ability. Like there is no competition to have. So whatever it is you think you're winning, no one's judging it. No, <laughs> no one's paying attention to it. No, no, one's, no one's waiting to give you your gold star for doing the role play good. <laughs> yeah, I would sit there and I go, like the people who are very like competitive as far as the amount of followers they have. Um, other than the people that want to have that many followers, I don't think that there's a lot of people who are impressed by the amount of followers you have. No, uh, not really. Um, <clears throat> as far as like, yeah, as far as like how many people are a part of your RP, like I have definitely met some people who throw their numbers around and recognizing that Karen and I run completely different games. Um, it's... I think that like the idea of being like, well, I have 900 people in my server and we're sitting here happily with 12 or 12 or 13 people in our server. Like mm -hmm. this is the type of story that we want to tell rather than with 900 people. Yep. Um, yeah, no, um, Holly, I agree with you that competition isn't a hundred percent bad for games. Sometimes it's fun. Which you're talking about how to play Monopoly or Risk without being ultra competitive. Well, here's an example of where you can get ultra too competitive with a board game or a game. Say you're playing with family and one of the family members is, you know, 12, 13, and maybe they're not very good at the game. Don't like bust out your top strat when you're playing with your teenage family member who's stupid and doesn't know how to play yet. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, there is like there you oh, there there are people that are too competitive at things where you're supposed to be competitive too. Like that is a thing. Oh yeah. There absolutely within Monopoly, as we know, last night I kicked ass. Um <laughs> <laughs> I was playing Monopoly last night. Anyway, oh, okay. um there is this <laughs> time and a space for competitiveness to exist in a collaborative effort where the goal is to collaborate with people to create a story that you all are a part of, competition shouldn't exist to that extent outside of game competition, in yeah. my opinion. Absolutely. Yeah. Sports balls, uh, monopoly, um, risk, high high competitive things. Even like even to some extent, writing competitiveness. Like if you're mm -hmm. joining, if you're submitting a piece of artwork, like that's all fine to be competitive about. Um, but I think that that within this particular hobby, competitiveness is going to be like a virus that will just spread, and and taking a step back and realizing that you don't need to be competitive is like wearing a mask. <laughs> just the, just the metaphor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. So yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't hate all competition. I just feel like in, in our culture, we fetishize it to the point that it invades things where it has no place. And, yeah. and it just ends up hurting us. And role play is a really good example of that because there is no competition in role play except with your, your past self. And and like, yeah, and the competitiveness it is, again, like like Karen said, uh, it starts with the idea of being the most, the do, one doing the most work, doing the most they can, constantly giving to the system. All of, like, that's where competitiveness within America exists, and, and you boil it down to competitiveness within family members, within friends groups, within all of these things, it really is boiled down to a, a, a like level of worth, unless it's a healthy level of competitiveness. But unfortunately, systemically, we don't have healthy competitiveness because, you know, our United States system is messed up. Yeah. And that's how you get, and that's how you get football teams that pay their players to hurt other people. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for the follow. Um, oh. I think that's a bot. Never mind. <laughs> not that bot. Not bad but bot. also thanks for the follow bot. <laughs> yeah. Um, hopefully it's not a bot and it's a real follower. I don't know. <laughs> if you are real, sorry for thinking you're a bot. There's a bunch of bots with the with Lunar in their name right now. So very sorry. <laughs> Fascinating. Is our Lunar a bot? Maybe she's no. a bot. 
<laughs> he's a bot turned good. She's like the Star Wars guy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he's like one of the Clone Wars, one of the clones guys. What are they? Space troopers? I don't Oh yeah, stormtroopers. Stormtroopers. It's like yeah. the stormtroopers. Oh, that turned good. Maybe that's Oh, that, there's a there's a howl. I think that's Lunar Howling. Oh no, it's Katie Howling. Katie yeah, Howling. Katie Howling for Lunar. <laughs> this is literally just what happens in my brain that I'm like, oh, this thing. <laughs> Let's go on a tangent. Anyway, competitive competitiveness kills. You're not competing against anyone. Relax. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but ready to transition into our next one? Yeah, because this is All kind right. of the opposite. Yes, what you can take relax. it too far the other direction. <laughs> don't relax too much because if you relax too much, you start stop caring, and that's when passiveness enters the conversation, and that is our last deadly sin for an RP. Yeah. So overall, I feel like role players in general need to learn to be more assertive. For whatever reason, we just don't advocate for ourselves we as role players can get very people pleasing or very like i don't care we can do whatever you want you know and it's like um it's like that scene i think it's in the, the jungle book and it's like what are we going to do today and it's like i don't know what do you want to do today and it's like the two vultures back and forth i got the lines wrong but whatever you get you know the scene you know what i'm talking about um and it, we end up doing that like over and over and over and so like there's a lot of people out there that i feel like they really struggle with like why they're losing at role play, why they're not really getting it, why they're not keeping partners. And then come to find out it's because they never assert themselves. So no one ever knows what they want and they make people bored with them. Because that's what happens when you try to just people please and do whatever everyone else wants to do. People get bored with you. That's the result. Well, it's like, I think inherently RP is a very, attractive game for people who tend to be on the shy side especially first yeah. getting into the hobby right mm -hmm. um it's an internet form of escapism so yeah. you have yeah. like double escapism because you have the internet escapism and then you have fiction escapism <laughs> so it's mm -hmm. like this idea of being someone else but when you are plotting or talking on the level where you are you you don't have that thing to hide behind um, so people are really like, want to be people pleasers. Those are the type of people that it draws in, which is not a bad thing, yeah. but I agree with Karen that if you are just, yeah, sure. Let's do that. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Guess what that, guess what that gets taken as, uh, it's not, it's not people pleasing. It's not like excited to be here. It gets taken as you don't care. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And the per the second that you someone doesn't care is the second that it's like, ah, okay, well, this person really doesn't care if I'm like if they're they they don't care, so they don't seem to be into this. Therefore, I guess we're not doing this. <laughs> yeah, because that's what they're gonna assume that you're just too nice to tell them that you're just not that into it. Yeah, uh, that's and every that's happened. You're giving them absolutely. That's happened a ton of times. Um, and, and it, there's a certain level like that you have to kind of accept, especially as an adult sitting there and being like, oh, well, this person is busy or this person, do, you know, is, is, is maybe not as involved or doesn't really know me as well. But as soon as you start getting off more passive vibes, that's the second that people are like, all right, they don't care. I'm going to find someone who's as, as excited as I am. Yeah. Yeah. So if you find yourself saying like we talk about in role play it's a improv uh hobby right so what we're doing a lot of is yes anding right so if you find yourself doing a lot of yes and not a lot of and then you might be too passive uh if you're the person that's like i don't i don't care i'm down to role play anything you're probably being too passive right those are the situations that we're talking about so we're not talking about like being agreeable we're not talking about somebody that um that it you know it doesn't really that's okay with not necessarily getting what they want we're talking about somebody that's like always okay with not getting what they want and won't even voice what they want so the other person can know to even try to accommodate it 
right? And, and this happens all the time. It can happen like in interactions, kind of what we've been talking about so far, but it can even happen in a post by post sense. Like I've been in role plays before where once the role play starts, I realize that for the past five posts, my character is the only one that's actually done anything. And all their character has done is just follow mine along and follow yeah. mine's lead. And it's so frustrating because then I feel like I'm doing all the work, right? You're not even feeling like you're doing all the work. You are doing all the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Venom says, so I feel like I'm cursed when it comes to getting into games. Every time I get into a game, there tends to be a bunch of fighting within the group and suddenly poof, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> it takes a long time to find a good game in a good group where stuff like that doesn't happen. Because the truth is, anyone can set up a role play group. It is free. <laughs> so Not that means a lot of people do. <laughs> a lot of people do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's like a <laughs> Yep. Yeah, but um, going back, oh, something from Freya I liked was learning to put your uh, your arc out there and see if you could match with someone's character that you could build towards each other's arcs. Absolutely. Yes. I think that that's part that's of the, the collaboration and something that, that I, that we have really always encouraged in our, in our role plays. Uh, again, that like you, if you're putting something out there, if you're showing that you're excited, then what you want is someone to be excited back at you mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. want someone that has that matches your level that matches your excitability that's like yes let's do this thing let's do it um and not just say yes because they feel obligated or yes because of these things and when you just get a yes especially on the internet especially in this hobby you can't tell what that yes is and eventually you get enough yeses in a row it's really discouraging yeah. um yeah. and it sucks as, as someone who's been on both sides of those, I'm not going to lie, um, but as someone who is, but the being on the side where you're just getting yes, 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 and then no follow through um, or no excitement other than just saying yes, it sucks. Mm -hmm. It feels like a lie. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's exactly what it feels like. It feels like, oh, they're just placating me. They don't, they aren't actually interested. It's exactly what it feels like. Um, yeah. Like they're just, they're just doing this. They're just doing this because to, to them, I'm a role play machine, right? It's not, it, it, it's not, a, we're not building a connection between our characters. They're not actually enjoying it. You know, that's the signal that it sends is when we're being super passive. And, and what you think you're doing, what you think you're doing is being really nice. Like you think you're like being super accommodating and making sure that the other person knows that they can do what they want and like you're not being too pushy. And like, so when someone's being too passive, often they think they're doing the right thing. Like they think that they're being really good and awesome, but they're totally not. Instead, what they're doing is self-sabotaging. Yep. Yep. which we're all really good at yeah <laughs> um yep for sure but yeah no you're being self-sabotaging uh and this this also happens not just on one-on-one -on -one. i think it's most likely to happen one-on-one -on -one, but as an admin in a group it could be the same way too you can you can be passive as an admin uh and that will kill your rp Mm -hmm. You can, you can get to a point where you're, who, who knows, bored, tired, busy, um, anything that is taking you away from the RP that you are not as invested in anymore. Because I think that admins naturally have more investment than the average person because they have to build the RP. Mm -hmm. um, but for whatever reason, you're no longer invested and you're just saying yes to things or you're not building and doing all those admin things like making um different activities making different uh options throwing plots out there anything like that events out there no longer doing that that inactivity is all passivity and that mm -hmm. will kill your rp yep for sure and for sure it will and it's it's hard because like you you get to a point where you're like i've invested so much time it's that sunken cost right i've mentioned i've invested so much time and energy maybe this passivity will pass and i have to tell you i have never experienced a time where passivity has passed me either once uh, i start feeling it once it gets to a certain point like it's here to stay and i'm just over it i'm just not interested anymore 
you know yeah. i mean in, in other in other artistic hobbies like we know this happens like how many writers do you do you talk to that have like six works in progress and um the last time they finished uh a, you know a, a fic or a book or whatever was like a year ago right i mean it happens it happens for every creative pursuit that people do yeah and i mean there there are ways around it whereas like with solo writing you can only start over or do a different take but with an rp if you are bored of the concept of the world of the anything you're done yeah. <laughs> uh it's time to move on it might be time to close your doors it might be one of those things where it's like okay time to let it go yep. Um, but that's that's the, how to solve the problems. I think it's just about recognizing positivity. Um, and if you are spending minimum amount of time uh, on such things like RPing or, or connecting or doing anything like that, and you're dreading it more than anything, that's you're already passive at that point. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it's already happening to you. It's already happening. <laughs> <laughs> the call is coming from inside the house. Um, <laughs> Thank you for you the follow, Miss Dark. There. That's another one that might be a bot. Can we get some real followers? <laughs> You're not a bot. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, just in in general, in general, I feel like um, how's oh how's Malcolm doing? Sure, we can do a little Malcolm update. Uh, he's doing badly, very very he's badly. Doing forever to die yeah this he's man, you know oh it's been a so-so week for malcolm just so-so you know not horrible he's taking forever is he still not red and fun no is he he's having fun. fun being kidnapped i guess i mean he, it's not depleting his fun so what? you know oh my god oh miss dark is a person hey welcome thank you so much sorry there have been so many bots on twitch um, it's been really hard to tell lately uh, what's up with all that. So, sorry, I thought you were a bot, maybe. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Ice to meet you, too. But, oh, look at her hugging her child. They're so big, my God. <laughs> yeah, Malcolm's they're been kids. locked in a room since they were babies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's gonna jump, he's gonna jump rope. He wants to jump rope right now, and he's got low fun. She's got low fun, too. She can come jump rope with her brother. Um, what does Miss Dark say? Uh, what I can find this on to play is I have disc for this game, but they don't work on a computer origin. Um, Miss Dark, I cannot tell you how to find this on stream right now. You are just going to have to do some Googling. This is a very old game, but there are instructions out there. Uh, Pleasant Sims has some pretty good ones. That PleasantSims.com, that's what I would check out. Um, but I cannot tell you. Hint, hint. <clears throat> <laughs> is this is this an illegal operation that we have here, Karen? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Straight up with it. I love. Not Giannis. really, because it's not that I've not bought this game. It's just that maybe I'm not playing my purchased copy right this moment. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but no, I think that. Um, Passivity kills, and it is it is the one that I think is most common, uh, and has affected the most people. Because I think at some point we've all gotten past this, something. Yeah, there's there's been times where I'm just like tired. Where you know, like if you have a string of bad partners that are like particularly aggressive on you, that are um, particularly you know frustrating, demanding, whatever. There is an allure to just being like I'm just gonna be passive for a while and just let things happen for a while. Like fuck it, you know I'm done. And I've definitely fallen into that trap before after I've had a string of bad experiences. Um, and I think we've all done it for one reason or another. Like we are not immune to uh, to this passive behavior. Like it happens, you know, it definitely happens. And it's, I think it's just also like you want to maintain the relationships, but maybe not maintain the RP. And that's yeah. a hard balance too. That's something that's difficult to balance. It's something that's difficult to like figure out how it all works is how do you maintain all of that? Mm -hmm. uh, and the reality is, is that the best way to maintain it is not to continue on doing something that makes you miserable. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it is true that maybe if you're not role playing that you might not be able to stay friends with all of those people. You know, oh, yeah. they might fade away if you're not following the same hobby and that's really sad and I know it's really difficult for a lot of people to deal with, but that is simply the truth. That is just how that is just how that functions and it does suck to lose friends because you stop role playing. I've experienced it before. I mean, I've definitely taken role play breaks. And, um, and lost touch with people. I, I try to stay, you know, up with them, but I have friends that used to role play and don't role play anymore and I miss them terribly, but we don't have a hobby, so there's nothing to talk about. So you know what I mean? And if they ever wanted to role play again, then wonderful, we'd probably be friends again because I didn't burn that bridge, but you know, I don't talk to them as often anymore and that's just simply how it is. You know, that's just how it is. And it's, yep. And that's, that's part of the acceptance of of this hobby mm -hmm. uh, is that it also exists on the internet, which means that the relationships, even though that they are just as valid and just as deep as in-person friendships, um, they are much more fragile. Yeah. And in way more quickly. Uh, passivity might also kill that, but sticking around for the purpose of that isn't going to do anyone any good. In fact, it might be someone even more resentful. Mm -hmm. So communicate your feelings with other people. <laughs> yeah. What you don't want to do, what you don't want to do is let a friendship in because that bridge was burned because you didn't communicate and they felt disappointed. Right? Yep. Like that's and I guarantee you that's absolutely. And we've all made this mistake. Hell, I made this mistake. I did this with Karen, even. Mm -hmm. Where I was like, was things got busy. I couldn't keep up anymore with RP. I never said anything. I just kept saying yes to shit. Karen got tired of it, uh, and we ended up not being on good terms for a little while. We yep. came back together. We figured it out, but that it happens to everybody. Like it's not a it's not a bad thing. It just happens. Yep. Now, luckily, um, we kept up with how to get in contact with each other, so all was not lost. But um, you know, it can totally happen that way. And, and online, you don't always know enough about the person's real life to be able to find them again later, right? So yeah. so that definitely happens too. So I just think, like, this is something that, that, like, as you get older, it gets easier, right? So I think when you're young, when you're younger, you maybe don't realize that, like, this is something that's just going to happen to you throughout your life, where you're gonna run into situations that, um, you know, you're gonna lose touch with friends and that's just kind of how that is. So it's one of those things that's just kind of like, you have to learn to deal with it. You just have to learn to deal with it. <sighs> yeah, it's hard. Yep. But, yep. okay, so we've been talking about the three things that will kill an RP. Do mm -hmm. you think it's about time to start talking about preventing it officially? Yes. Okay. So how do you fix these situations? Um, I think do do? the first, I think, I think first thing that you can try, uh, is it, it, this might not work in the RP that you're currently in. Um, but reinventing ways that you run an RP or join an RP. Uh, and that sounds like super easy, like, right? Is that you just have to reinvent yourself, but that's not, <laughs> that's not what I mean. <laughs> what I mean is reinventing is, is a form of sitting there and being like, okay, this is not working. What could work? What's something that I'm capable of changing? What's something that I've noticed is not working? Maybe you hear this RP and this um, post and, and everything like that. And you're like, okay, Karen and Landon had some good points. There's some stuff that I do. I'm, I'm saying yes too much without offering anything, or I really am treating things like a competition. How can I reinvent my way of looking at this so that I can change my actions? Mm -hmm. um, and it could be listening to our advice. Our advice is fantastic. <laughs> uh, it has changed so many lives. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow, landed. <laughs> I just started talking, and then like things come out, and I don't even know what's going to be said until they're already out of my mouth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I think that this is. <laughs> thank you, Katie. Uh, but I think that that real, like that introspective look of reinventing how you approach running and how you approach joining RPs 
can be really beneficial. Uh, even if you don't end up changing anything, it can at least be in a, a, like beneficial to deep diving where the issues might stem from. Yep. So this, I think, is really important when it comes to something where like, you're thinking, like, I used to be successful, and then now all of a sudden I'm not successful in the way that I want to be anymore. So it can be really tempting to, if something worked in the past, to keep doing it, even if it hasn't worked for a long time. So if something hasn't worked for you for a while, maybe it's time to try something different. Like even if, even if the thing worked before, even if it worked before, maybe it's time to be like, okay, but it's not working now and it's not worked lately. So maybe let's change it up. So that can be as simple as giving your rules a revamp. And you should, I recommend having rules not only for groups, but also for one-on-ones. I have a whole like RP Bible thing on my YouTube channel that you can go find more information about what I'm talking about there. But maybe it's a revamp for your rules. Maybe you need to like mentally reset your expectations, right? Like maybe it, it just, it's going to depend on what exactly is wrong, but you need to take, take some introspection and figure that out. So that is something that I would strongly recommend in these situations. Yep. And um, I mean, I, I am a fan of introvert and um, introversion. That too. Introspection. Uh, introspection. I know when the <laughs> introversion came out and I just had to just dig down into it. Introspection. <laughs> I am a fan of introspection as well. Um, a huge fan of sitting there and being like, okay, what am, what am I responsible for that's contributing to this? Because the mm -hmm. reality is too, like, like Venom said, as feeling cursed about you enter an RP and then everything goes to shit. Uh, sometimes it just happens, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is nothing you brought. Everyone's already fighting. Everyone's already a mess. Things have already, you know, uh, the competition has already taken over. The passivity has already taken over. The uh, other thing we talked about. <laughs> um, oh, the uniqueness. The uniqueness has already taken over. Um, you can't oh, no. necessarily control that, but sometimes it's important to sit there and be like, okay, did I contribute anything? No? Cool. Then what is it that I am looking at? What are these things that I am joining have in common? Uh, how can I change this? Like just that introspection is always a good thing. Again, even if nothing changes. Okay. So we have a question here now. Um, Tormund grew up. I totally forgot it was about to be his birthday. We didn't do a cake for him. So sorry, Tormund. So, um, so Tormund, do we want, what kind of Sim do we, do we want him to be? So Landon was a family Sim, so we don't yeah. want to do family again. Um, and I can tell you, I really don't like pleasure aspiration. I think it's pretty boring, but we can do it if y'all want it. But the other choices are popularity, fortune, knowledge, and romance. So what kind of Sim do we think Tormund should be? I mean, I think fortune. Fortune? Okay. <laughs> fortune? We can I go with fortune. Personally... I personally think, um, I personally think that we deserve windows. We deserve and windows. He has a fortune at, um, aspiration. We might get windows. Well, it just, it's just what he wants. It doesn't necessarily mean that's what's going to happen. Right. Um, Katie wants, wants romance. Okay. So we've got Katie wants romance. Landon wants fortune. Does anybody want a tiebreaker that? Should we do fortune or should we do romance? Oh, fortune's good though. She says. Does anybody want a tiebreaker fortune versus romance? Lunar says fortune as well. Fortune. Okay, we're going fortune. We're going fortune. All right. We'll do Tormund. romance. His little sister will be romance. It'll be fine. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so Lily will be a romance sim. All Which right. Okay, he wants, so he's a fortune sim. He wants to go to college, so he's going to have to do better at school. <laughs> All right. All right, all right. Okay, cool. All right, sorry, I totally interrupted. No, um, but yes, introspection, really introspection. Fun. And introspection's hard. Like, I know this this advice that we're giving as far as, like, oh, be introspective and stuff and we make it sound like it's easy, but it's literally, like, years of work. Like, we know that what we're saying is, like, a long road to hoe, right? It's not going to be simple. It's not something that's just going to happen for you. Like, you're going to have to work at it, right? So, it... <laughs> It's something that if you find that you hear yourself in any of the stuff that Landon and I are talking about today, like, don't expect yourself to like, oh, I get it. I fixed it now. You formed these habits over a long period of time. It's going to take a long period of time to break them. 
okay. Like that's also, it's okay to also sit there and be like, my, my experience might be different than Landon and Karen's. There's nothing wrong with wanting a lot of followers or that competent or having some competition aspect within RP. Yeah. Like um, maybe, maybe you make a role play that's more like war game style instead of narrative absolutely. role play style. And then competition's way better for that, you know? Absolutely. So I think that there is, there's a lot of like room for, for where you're at versus like the advice we're giving. But the, the patterns are happening for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, it, sometimes like when you join enough groups and you're like, okay, I join enough groups and within three months, the groups fall apart. You should, I mean, if that has been happening for years, maybe, maybe it's not just the groups that are contributing to that, right? Yeah, maybe or you are contributing. You never yeah. Or maybe I just, I so want to start an RP, but then I start doing all these things and I think about how unique it needs to be and, and how I want it to be different and how I want people to be excited about it. And then I never start it because I get yeah. so wrapped up in the uniqueness of it. Or maybe you don't call it uniqueness of it. Maybe you just get so wrapped up in the perfection of it, that it needs to be perfect. Um, and that perfect thing, a lot of the times equates to perfect uh, uniqueness within the creativity uh, spectrum. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh so so maybe there is like something that you can you can ex you know maybe just like let things go yeah. um <laughs> yeah or let you grow I love that Katie <laughs> yeah um surrounding yourself with the right people can definitely help if you have got a bunch of people that drag you down like then you're not going to be able to to meet those things that you're trying to meet no. Um, and if you, yeah, I mean, that's the other thing too, that I think is incredibly important about this. Sometimes we like, because this is a collaborative hobby, because you want to find a group, because you want that permanent forever family, um, you cling to the people that don't align with you, um, that are sold on the uniqueness of everything they do needs to be unique. And you're like, man, I give, I give six shits about it. Right. Um, <laughs> not, not too much, but a little bit. Uh, and they're like total 11. They just, they care about it so much. It's their number one priority. Maybe those, yeah. that group isn't your forever group. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Sometimes I'm funny. Um, <laughs> but yes, no, I think that, uh, it's, that's also something that needs to be taken into consideration is yeah. that, um, looking into yourself and looking into the people that you surround yourself with. And in addition to finding the right people, I think it's also making sure that you are regularly inspired, right? So um, I think that this is something that goes back to what we talked about. If you wanna be a, a good writer, part of what you have to do is not just write, you have to read a lot, right? So when it comes to, when it comes to role play, I think it's important to, to follow what you find exciting. You know, don't be scared to try something new if you've always been a fandom role player, but um, you see an, an OC role play that looks kind of neat, like just try it, see what happens. Worst case scenario, you it doesn't work out, but so what? Role play in the grand scheme of things doesn't get you anything anyways. So, you know, what does it matter? Um, same thing uh, the other way around. If you've always done OC role play, but, uh, but you recently watched Loki and you realize that it's the best show ever made and you want to role play some Loki, like, you know, go for it right so or it's you, just kind of, oh sorry go ahead oh i was gonna say or if you've also like you've always ever done heroes rp a bad guy yeah if you've always yeah. um if you've always always done like certain i mean even even to the level of if you've always done multi para paragraphs see what a quicker rp might feel like mm -hmm. um it, you can really change stuff up just because you change something just because you experiment with something just because you do something once doesn't mean you have to stick with it for the rest of your life no yeah. one is sitting there and being like if you try something you have to like it and you have to do this forever <laughs> mm -hmm. like um, it, to to kind of build on this um with uh with what katie was saying making sure you're surrounding yourself with the right people like just don't be scared to like join a group by yourself or to make a one-on-one -on -one account by yourself like you don't have to drag your friends along with you if you just want to do something new that you don't know necessarily is going to work out, right? And that's okay. And you might meet new friends that you can bring in. I was going to say, as admins, we have met some of the best people and people we consider really close friends um, because they just joined our RP 
the one-on-one -on -one because mm -hmm. one of them just was like, yeah, my other RP is not working as much or I need or I want more time. This sounded interesting. So I'm a joy. And yep. that's how we met. Like, that's how we met Katie. He joined mm -hmm. our RP. Jane joined our RP. Like that, we met a bunch of people coming in and just like trying a new thing and seeing how they like it. <laughs> yep. For sure. And then they it turns out that they're really cool and that we want to be friends with them. <laughs> <Yeah, all right. laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, Landon. Landon, you're so mean. So I mean. Ruin it. I ruin everything. It's, it's the fun <laughs> mechanism. Um, <laughs> no, no, they're fantastic. I can girl over everybody so much. Uh, oh Katie gosh. goes, I'm in her DMs. It's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's okay. That's why when we did the Shadow and Bone, you got the Shadow you know, symbol, and I got the sun symbol. I mean, that's the dynamic, right? So we're it doing. Be evil. <laughs> <laughs> she only has six, six shits to give. She has to be frugal. <gasps> um, oh, how gosh. many? Who knows? That's how many I have. Um, <laughs> but no, I think I think that uh, it's really change things up, do something different, chase your exciting, chase it. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think also with, I think also with um, admin, that's a great advice too. If you have a concept that you find exciting, chase it. And yeah. if it happens yeah. to look exactly like Loki, that's fine. It's okay. No one's going to judge. Um, if there are certain aspects of admin that you find exciting, but then you've always been caught up on the perfectness of how well your rules have to be, how well these things have to be, how well this all has to be together. Let me give you advice. Find an admin team um, or steal from someone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I think I can speak a little bit to that because this is a question that comes up sometimes that I have never really answered because the answer is a little bit awkward, but we're talking about awkward stuff in this stream, so I'll answer it. So the question that comes up sometimes is, I've never run a role play before um, and I don't know how to find people who will do it with me. Okay, you are, you are skipping some steps, my friend. If you don't have anybody already that would be willing to run a role play with you that you know you could go ask for this, don't run a role play, go make friends first, right? Like go find people that you like, that you wanna to talk to, that you wanna run a role play with. That's step one. But that doesn't mean that you can't go ahead and like get your idea down on paper, right? So if that's your situation, you're like, oh gosh, Karen, that really bums me out. I don't have any friends. I get it. Okay, I get it. We're, we're shy people, role players are shy. And, um, but here's what you can do. You can, Open the notes app on your phone, open up a Google doc, write down your idea so that it's there, it's out of your brain. And then once you do have role play friends, you can go make the role play. You already started it, right? You don't have to start from scratch then. And you can even review it and probably come up with something even way better because you had a chance to, to kind of sleep on it and think about it. Yep. yep. Um, <sighs> Just so many, like, yeah, that's follow, follow, follow what makes you excited. Yeah. This is supposed to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> so if you see something uh, looks cool, just try it. I also think, and I think that this is our last piece that we've written down, so we'll take any last things, but yep. um, let it go. Let it go and learn from next time. And letting it go can be letting go of the RP that you've gotten passive about. Letting go of the a player that has gotten passive to you or that you've gotten passive about mm -hmm. um let it let it go to uh to competition like to to wanting to be the best and the most liked and the most writing with and then the most on task and on point the most unique let it go mm -hmm. it, it it feels like such a big deal especially if this is your world and this is your life, and this is this is what you love. But um, and like life by like this is your hobbies. These are the things you really enjoy. This is where you find you're happy. It feels like a big deal, but at the end of the day, these are the small things that really don't matter. Yeah, they really like don't. these these three things are the things that don't matter. <laughs> yeah, and letting them go and not beating yourself up for ever being involved in it will do you wonders. Yep, absolutely. But you know what is really actually important? 
Landon, you did it. You made your family full of little blonde kids. They're they're all, all very adorable blonde babies. This is all I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my son all grown up. Look at him. Yep, and Lily's really cute too. Like I was just zooming in on them while they were eating to get a good good look at them. Um, they're all very adorable. Like, just look at this. And she's she's like she's actually got a pretty good default outfit too, like this green and like orange thing. She's real cute and fashionable. Scroll over. She, she is very cute and fashionable. This is all I wanted. Yeah. So good job. Good job, Malcolm. You you've served your purpose. Um, now, he didn't die this stream. I really thought he would, but he's not for some reason. I don't know why. Um, maybe next time we play Sims. <laughs> because he is very hungry, so I don't, I don't get why he's not dead. Maybe if I wake him up? Oh, there he goes. I did it. Waking him up did it. Bye, Malcolm. Bye, Malcolm. Bye, baby. Bye. It's been so good to see you. Oh, look at the Grim Reaper! Yep. Oh my yep. god, can you, is this the one that you can have a child with the Grim Reaper? Is that this version? Um, kind of, sort of, so not really. It can break <laughs> your game. But uh, there is a lady in Strange Strange View or Strange Town where that's kind of what the plot seems like to me. Yeah, oh, let me take these walls down so that you guys can get in and see dead Malcolm. Oh, my God. So they could just like be like, oh, yeah, this is this is where he be for the last few weeks. Yes. He didn't get to see his son grow up. It's going to be okay. disappointing and depressing. Oh, goodbye. We got a little bit of money. Um, We got a little bit of money from his death. Hey! Th almost 300 simoleons. That's not too bad. Could be worse. Well, I mean, he could have. He Yes. I mean, we married him for his trust fund, so I'm really disappointed. But you know what? But we, it's because we spent it all. We spent it all already. <laughs> Listen, I am a Black Widow. I just want to make sure. <laughs> yeah, well, you're really sad now about it. So um, I don't know how that's going to affect you next time we play Sims. But uh, poor Landon, she's really sad that um, that we oh. killed her husband, even though it's what everyone wanted, including her. Okay. <laughs> oh, see, the kids are sad about it too. They got a bad memory of their dad dying. Sorry, kids. Sorry, kids. <laughs> um. So so yeah. Uh. So let it let it go. You know. Um. Just like Malcolm did with life. <laughs> That's the point we're trying to make. Today. That is the point. Mm -hmm. All right. I know we're a little early, but are we ready for our article? We're so ready for our article. I think Malcolm's death was um, was a perfect ending. Let me save and uh, get out of the game. We'll go back to what for a yes, second. Katie, get Grimm's number. This is what I'm here for. <laughs> okay, I'm saving and getting out of Sims. Um, yeah, you can, like, become friends with the Grim Reaper. There, there are NPCs, though, in Sims 2 that if you, like, try to bring them into your household, like, marry them or have kids with them or things like that, then certain things will break. And um, I can't remember if Grim Reaper is one of those NPCs that will break things, so that's why I hesitate to say yes. I'm not 100% sure. All right. All right. I see the article. Right. Here yes. we go. Okay. This simple 10 question word test reveals how creative you are. Oh. So, so your it's camera not went away for actually a second. There we go. Creativity. Like it's not the it's not the definition of creativity. It's called divergent association task. Mm. Uh, basically it's how random can you be? Oh. Uh, and they've developed this this 10 answers just give 10 quick answers uh, and they studied it and it showed like how creative those responses are. So I think you're trying, you, what you try to do is you come up with 10 unique words, uh, okay. 10 unique nouns that are as separate from each other as you can possibly get. Um, and that is supposed to tell you how creative you are. 
Oh, so you're trying, cause, because of course, if you start saying nouns, you're going to say related ones. Like I'm going to say like yeah. cat, dog, queen, you know, and those are all related. And the queen's the name of one of my kitty cats, right? That's what your brain is most likely to do. So you're trying to come up with things that are not related. That are not related. So you could probably do queen um, because, or queen is a proper noun. So you can't, that's against the rules. Oh, you can't do uh, proper nouns? Okay. Proper noun. So, uh, and I think queen, because it's a job title is a proper noun. Oh, I don't know. But I know it's a proper noun the way I was thinking uh, of it because it's my cat's name. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but like, like that would be a good jump though, is to do cat and queen. Like that would mm -hmm. be not for you necessarily, which is why this test is obviously biased, but oh, it yeah. would be cat and queens don't have anything in common other than the fact that your cat's named queen. Mm. Um, <laughs> Gotcha. So yes, so you can very quickly take this test. It's down on the bottom and I figured it would be really fun if I made you take this test. Okay, so I'll I take the mine. test here. Okay. And it says it says two to four minutes and it's not actually two to four minutes. Okay, think of almost... novel and more varied uses for common objects, find associations between related words, solve more insight and analytical problems. Ooh, okay. Um, if you score higher, you can do these things. Most people, okay, I'm just reading the instructions, make sure I understand. Yeah, you're good. Okay, let's try it. I probably would do better if this wasn't like live on stream, um, it, but probably, I'm gonna try. Probably would have been better if I had told you about this, but I figured we'll get the real, just true reaction. Okay, let's find out. Take the test. Okay, please enter 10 words as different from each other. Oh, and I enter them here. Okay. Yes. I love the silence. I'm trying to give Karen her time to think. <laughs> Thank <No> you. <laughs> Although she should read it out loud once she has all her words. Okay, I'm just filling in these last things. Okay, so the words that I chose are book, mirror, cat, dry eraser, blue, water, lip gloss, tissue box, medicine, curling iron. Uh, blue um, is an adjective, and it oh, says no adjectives. No adjectives. Okay, I have to change this to something else then. Um, okay, light. There we go. Uh, contribute your anonymous responses to our research. Yes, that's fine. Okay, did I break any other rules? There's no uh, proper nouns, no specialized vocabulary. Yeah, I tried to do all everything simple. Did you do, did you do one word? Is there any that are two words? Yeah, I mean tissue box, but I guess I could just do tissue. And curling iron could just become iron. Iron. Um, and dry eraser, I guess it can just become eraser. I didn't realize I couldn't do words that are just two words. I don't know for sure that's not in the rules, but I figured better it says It says only single words in English, but to me, even though there were two words, it was one object. So I, I don't know, whatever, anyway. I've erased them, so it's fine. Okay, let's submit. You scored 77.63, higher than 47% of people who have completed this task. So I'm smack dab average. <clears throat> um, the average score good. is 78. Yeah. Most people score between 74 and 82. The lowest is 24 and the highest is 96 in our published samples. Although the score theoretically ranges from zero to 200. Okay. I don't know how it decides like related and not related. Um, so that's interesting. I don't either. I was looking at my little square. I got 83.74. Um, I was looking at the little square to see how they were scoring. It was like I had dress and hair and that was like 52 points or something in their thing. And I was like, OK, this is interesting. Yeah, like I'm, <laughs> this is it's interesting what they say is somewhat related because green is very not related. Right. Because that makes your score yeah. higher and better. And then red is very related. So it says that mirror and light are related. So that's yeah, interesting. If you're like looking at a bathroom, you'd see a mirror and a light. So those two things yeah. exist in the same area. For me, I, so the words I said were video, eggplant, mountain, writer, desk, or dress, hair, and truck. Um, 
And so like truck and dress and hair are, are close and truck and mountain are close. I, I don't see to me, truck and mountain aren't related, but okay. Yeah, I don't <laughs> <want to> either. <laughs> um, but I don't live near mountains, so maybe I just don't understand it. Maybe you need trucks to go up mountains. I don't know. Um, Katie right. says she got 74. So you pretty much, you scored pretty much what, what I did, which is right in this you know, normal range right here. Landon, what did you say your score was? Uh, 83. 83. So you're right there in yeah. that, that middle range too. So I got 83.7. Okay. Yeah. 83.7. So I'm a little above average. Yeah. Ever so slightly. Um, ever so okay. Slightly. Um, interesting. I bet if you practice this, you could get better. And I wonder if this is one of those things where like, if you played this game a lot, you would be able to like build more divergent thinking, kind of like if you play a lot of Sudoku, you get much better at pattern recognition, you know? Um, I wonder I if it's, if it works like that. Yeah. And I also think that if you spent more time on it, right. If you spent five minutes on it compared to one minute on it, like if you sat there and it was like, okay, hair, 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 what is the opposite of hair? Oh, shade. Uh, like yeah. you, could, you could like literally try to figure out those words as much as possible and spend a decent amount of time on it. You probably mm -hmm. are going to get a better score. Yeah. And I tried to do it within that two to four minutes that they recommended. Right. Yes. Um, but yeah, I'm sure if I sat here and actually spent like, you know, 20 minutes on it and really thought about it, then I could get like the super ridiculous 200 score or something like that, you know, close to it. Exactly. But that's not the point. The point is to see how naturally divergent thinking you are. And based on other divergent thinking tests, I don't know if this, this goes, if this game works that way, but typically the older you get, the harder divergent thinking is. Yes, typically. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll, I, apparently I'm above average creative and I'll take it. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> yeah, right. this is definitely something I could see myself like boredom, you know, practicing, seeing like, oh, can I get higher? Can I get higher? You know what I mean? <laughs> I love All that. Right. Like, what is the true opposite of hair? Uh, wallpaper. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just, I mean, I just started naming things that I know I have in my house. You know, because I knew that there would be different things, but at least they're all in my house. So my brain could be like, "Ooh, house, you know, that's anyway, that's what I was actually doing in my head for if you're curious. <laughs> all right. I think we're good on the stream today. So awesome. Landon, where can everybody find you? You can find me right here, maybe. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it went. Yeah. Um, I love this so much. So yes, you can <laughs> find me on any of these social medias. Uh, I have my Amazon wish list on there too. I also have another one um, that's on my Instagram. If you follow me on there, that's for books for my classroom. If you feel like supporting a sixth grade teacher, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, but also TikTok is funny and I'm making great content. So you can follow me there. Um, and that's what I got for you. All right. So then where you can find me, you can find me right here on Twitch. I stream on Saturdays. Landon is with us most of the time when we stream on Saturdays, Interstage Window, because that is our community show where it's not just me, right? Um, next week, we are doing our, um, I guess you can say it, uh, they're, they're sort of like live video essays. So yeah. we're going to do one on Chamber of Secrets, the second Harry Potter book. And I'm really excited about it. I have a lot of spicy thoughts. Um, it's, it's definitely the worst book of the series. I still stand by that, but reading it again in a, in a post, um, turf era of JK Rowling, it's just, I have a lot more thoughts that I never used to have about this book. But yeah, I always skipped this. I always skipped this one on rereads in the past because it was so boring. Anyway. It's so boring. <laughs> It's, I actually had a huge discussion about why it's so boring with someone that's because it's a bad, it's badly written children's book. Which is not good. Anyway, uh, we'll talk about more spicy takes next Saturday. Join us then. Mm -hmm. Yep. I also stream on Thursdays. Um, that is my solo stream called Artistic License. Right now, most of what we're doing is playing Final Fantasy X. We are in the end game of that now. We're going around collecting the celestial weapons and the um, additional uh, optional Aeons and stuff like that. So that's what we're doing on Thursdays. I also have uh, my YouTube show called Spare Room. That is my like short scripted. So if you don't like watching long form streams, I give role play advice on there that goes up on every, kind of every other Wednesday. I've made like almost 150 episodes of that thing. So it doesn't post every week. It posts a couple times a month and it, but it's on Wednesdays at 2 PM when it does go up. 
Um, and then all of the other stuff, you know, you can support me in all of the usual ways. I do all the same things every other content creator does as far as that goes. You know how it works. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that was our show today. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thanks. And, um, don't forget to be awesome. Yeah. And, uh, let me find someone to raid. We're going to raid Jed today. We're going to raid Jed because he's playing this beef simulator, which looks really fun and funny. All right. Oh, thank you for the applause. Thank you for the applause, Katie. Landon can live another week. I can bless. Thank God. Oh, well, <laughs> I've been fed. <laughs> All right. Y'all, um, don't forget to make it a great day. Bye. Right. Bye.